Master Your Mindset Radio, Episode 23. Welcome to Master Your Mindset Radio, the show where we empower you to conquer limiting beliefs and transform your world with your gifting and purpose. Now for your host, Elizabeth Nader. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. Glad to have you here. Today I want to talk to you about letting go of the past. I had a dinner this weekend and met some new people and two of the women that I was talking to both brought up things that happened to them when they were nine or ten years old. And it was a conversation about sports and girls being involved in sports and how coaches saying the wrong thing could definitely hurt a girl's career if she decides to pursue a particular sport or her body image or whatever. So we were discussing all of that and it was amazing to me how in such great detail both of these women could recount something that was said to them by an adult or by a coach when they were in a particular sport and how it hurt them so much, how it hurt their body image, how it hurt their self-esteem. And they were able to tell these stories as though it just happened two minutes ago. They were able to paint the entire picture of what was happening, how they felt at the time, who was there, what was said. And as they were telling the story, I don't think they even recognized or realized how fresh and raw it was to them and how kind of amazing it was that these women who were both in their 40s or 50s were able to so easily and painfully and in a detailed way recount these moments. And it just struck me as amazing how we can allow what someone says to us who's in a position of authority in our life to absolutely write that on our spirit. I mean, it just dropped into them and has stuck with them ever since. The degree to which it still bothers them is, you know, that's their personal story to tell, but it was very clear that it was real and present for them. And so it just struck me that, first of all, we have to be so careful what we say to kids. Not that, you know, we're walking around perfectly, especially as parents, saying all the right things at all the right times, but. We do need to clean up things when we make mistakes and we do have to be aware of the fact that the power of words is incredible and how when younger kids are so open to voices of authority that they will just take what they say as truth. They will take what they say and it can change the way kids feel about themselves. So that's the first thing is just exercising uh, that caution. But the second thing that really struck me is how much we need to shake off these things and shake off the past. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. Because here we are talking with uh, the three of us are talking and we're all, you know, older. And yet these stories about things that were said as young girls are still there and still fresh and right under the surface. When do we shake those off? When do we start to drop, cut ties with and walk away from the things that were said or done to us when we were younger that have molded the way we see ourselves, frankly, that have molded our self-esteem, that have influence on us, especially in moments where we feel vulnerable. Now, in some cases, we may just tell these stories because they're stories and because we recognize that that hurt us at the time, but we've dealt with it. But I talk to a lot of people and I would say in the majority of cases, it has not been dealt with. In the majority of cases, it's simply a wound and the wound is left. And you know what happens to a wound if it's not dealt with, cleaned out, cleaned up, washed out, and all the debris taken away is it festers. It festers and it doesn't heal and it becomes infected. And in some cases it may try to heal, but it heals over with scar tissue. And so there's a scar and maybe scar tissue there. We know in the natural, we have to take care of these wounds, even the small ones. You know, people can get a small cut and if not dealt with correctly and if surrounded by a bad environment full of pathogens, that small cut can turn into a life-threatening infection. And it seems crazy that it starts with something so small, but left ignored and left not dealt with, it can absolutely turn into something life-threatening. And thus is with our emotions, it's the same. Thus is with uh, our self-esteem, how we see ourselves, um, the way that we look at our future, the way that we look at our gifts, our talents. Those small cuts can become massive wounds if we don't deal with them. Now as children, we don't really have the 
capacity that we have as adults to deal with these things. We don't necessarily understand how to put it in context, how to move on with it. If we have adults or parents around us that that actually hear what's been said to us or have the opportunity to catch it and, and put it in its rightful place and help us to not let it sort of drop into our spirit, then we are all the better for that. But usually that's not the case. These things happen and a lot of times parents don't even know that their kids have experienced it. So we don't really have the, 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 the coping mechanism as kids like we should. And it's my hope that parents, the more they learn about all of this, the more they can give their kids that coping mechanism. But rather, instead, what we have to do as adults is we again have to put this in its rightful place and be willing to admit that something said to us, done to us, that may seem innocuous to someone else, that may seem like not a big deal. I mean, there's some things that happen to kids that are you know, universally horrible. Everybody agrees that that's abuse in some form. Um, but these other th- small things that have the ability to write into our spirit, other people may think it's no big deal. And we know, we know how much it's affected us. As adults, it is our responsibility to turn around, look at that past, and to cut it out, cut it away, allow the wound to heal. You know, I think uh, in my book I have a quote, something that goes something like this, your wounding may not be your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. And, you know, I, I want you to think about your past and the wounds from your past and it may not just be childhood, by the way. Maybe something that happened to you last year, yesterday. Maybe something that happened to you five years ago as an adult. But the wounds of your past are like those tin cans that people tie on just married cars. You know how they tie? It's sort of an old-fashioned thing to do. They tie all those tin cans behind the car. And as the car goes down the road, it makes this horrible clanking sound and, and makes quite a quite a stir and and looks pretty funny. I want you to think about these woundings. I want you to think about the pain. I want you to think about these moments, no matter how small or how so or how large in your life that have hurt you, things that you've gone through even as an adult. If you've not dealt with them, it's like you're trying to move forward and you're dragging all these clanking cans behind you. You're just making a huge loud noise and you're not really free to move forward in life in the way that you want to. You turn around and look and see how many things am I pulling behind me? How many things that I should have dealt with, I haven't dealt with? How many things are there that are slowing me down? How many things are there that should have been cut out of my life already? That's the work you need to do. Because if you think about your past and your past pain and your past hurts as these cans, if you will, that you're pulling behind you as this debris that you're pulling behind you, all of a sudden it it, it becomes less uh, desirable to hold on to them, right? And more so uh, you want to be free, you want to shake it off. Why don't we do that naturally? I I think sometimes these experiences are almost like we're so familiar with the pain, it almost becomes something we hold on to. It's sort of like, well, I know how painful that experience was, I know how it makes me feel about myself, and and, and that's almost a more comfortable place to be in than stepping away from that and saying, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to heal, and I'm willing to believe potentially something totally different about myself. I'm willing to take the risk to try to heal from this and believe something else and, and seek truth about myself because it's scary. That's when you make yourself vulnerable. You're willing to step out and say, well, I, I don't believe that anymore, so what is really truth to me? In a lot of ways, it's safer to stay with the pain that you know. And some people do it their entire life. Some people never shake it off. And what does that mean for them? Well, it means for them they never see themselves correctly. They never tell themselves the truth. They're always hearing these things in their in their mind and in their spirit and in their soul that were written upon their heart as a result of painful experiences, as a result of other people's fast and easy words, as a result of failures, whatever it is. And that context for them becomes the lens through which they look at life. And that lens is small and limited because it only contains what they're willing to accept. And even though it's painful, even though they're living within others' limitations for them, even though they're not breaking out of those things that have hurt them, it becomes comfortable. And you know, that is my challenge to you. Have you gotten comfortable with something from your past that defines you. Even though you know it's painful, you know it so well, it's almost become a point 
of comfort, a point of, well, I know that to be true. I'm going to stick with that because I don't want to step out of my comfort zone. Even though no healing, no magic, no breakthrough can happen until you step away from the comfort of that which you know. And it's weird to use the word comfort with things that are painful. But when you know something well, it becomes comfortable. And it may be the worst thing in the world for you. But because you know it so well, it's hard to shake it off. So start to do the work on getting rid of those things that are behind you. They may have happened yesterday. They may have happened 30 years ago. They may have happened longer than that. I don't know. Things happen when we're kids. Things happen when we're adults. And it's just another loud clanking can that we're pulling down the freeway of life behind us because we refuse to cut ties with it. You need to cut it away out of your life. You need to do the healing and be willing to say, hey, can I believe something else about myself? Is how that person is what they said and how they made me feel, is it possible that's not true? Is it possible that what I told myself after I went through that failure or that painful experience, is it possible that those are lies? Is it possible none of that is true? Are you willing to challenge it? Are you willing to challenge the status quo in your life? Are you willing to reach for more and cut off all that stuff that you're dragging behind you? Because you know it's making so much noise back there that you keep looking in the rearview mirror to look at it. And as long as you're looking back, as long as you're looking behind you, as long as you're looking in the rearview mirror, you don't see where you're going. I know I'm using this metaphor, I'm like beating it to death, but it's good. As long as you keep looking backwards, you don't know what's in front of you. You can't make good choices. You can't steer yourself in the right place. You can't focus on what is potentially ahead. You can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. You can't see the possibilities because all you're doing is focusing on that loud, noisy, dirty, old stuff that happened to you. All those old words, all those circumstances, that's what you're focusing on because it's just clattering back there and clattering and clamoring for your attention. And the future is not doing that. The future is quiet and serene because nothing's been written on it yet. It's the horizon in front of you. It's the possibility of anything in front of you. That's where your focus needs to be. So what is it today that you need to cut off? What experience, what pain, what person do you need to forgive? What words that you've told yourself? What lies have you believed that you need to cut off and stop carrying around with you and stop dragging around with you so you can truly move forward? You can truly move into your future, which is yet unwritten, and decide to change the rules. Decide that you are going to look at the possibilities differently than to frame it all in what's happened to you in the past. This is what mindset is all about. This is about getting over these limiting beliefs. They don't come from just nowhere. They come from our experiences. We are a combination of all the things that have been said to us, done to us, decisions and choices we have made. All of that comes together and creates our reality. We have a lot of choice. We have a lot of power and a lot of freedom if we choose to take it, to create the reality that we want in our life. But that's not going to happen when you're dragging the old cans behind behind your car, if you will. So today is a day to cut them off and do the work that you need to do that. We will be doing things like that in the upcoming Mindset Reset, which is our first one of 2020, on Saturday, March 28th. It's in Florham Park, New Jersey. And I'm only opening this for 20 people. It's going to be an exclusive event. We're going to work hard that day to reset your mindset and give you game-changing ways to move forward in your life. It's truly going to be breakthrough focus. I'm super excited about it. If you are interested in it, you need to go to MindsetReset2020.com and just put in your email right now. Do that this week. Do it today. Because if you give me your email address, and I will send you the link to the early bird registration. That gives you two things. It gives you $50 off registration fee for a limited time, and it gives you one of the 20 seats before they fill up. It's going to fill up really fast, guys, so don't miss it. I've already got people asking me, can they get on the list? And you know, the truth is that registration link goes out, and you've got to just jump on it as quickly as you can. It's a very exciting day. If you need to break through, if you need to break out, if you need to figure out how to get where you want to go, if you need to shake off the past, if you need to rewrite what is ahead of you and look to the horizon, this is a day to do it. 
So I hope you guys sign up for that information and I'm very, very excited about it. We'll talk more about it later. Have a great week and make sure you do the work guys to set yourself free so you can focus on your future and rewrite what's going to happen to you. You have the power to do it. It's up to you. It's a choice. Talk to you guys soon. God bless. Thank you for listening to Master Your Mindset Radio. Before you go, if you want to be part of a free online community of like-minded individuals for support, resources, and inspiration as you conquer your limiting beliefs and pursue your purpose, go to elizabethnader.com slash community. That's elizabethnader.com slash community. Or search for Master Your Mindset Academy private group on Facebook. Looking forward to seeing you online.